Growing up, I was and still am a math nerd. And while I hate to admit it, I felt like I did peak in high school. And here are some interesting little stories that allowed that to happen. So for the first story, I self-studied A-level mathematics, or at least 90% of it, prior to entering junior college. If you want to check out a story on that, click on the link somewhere here, over here. And what that meant is that I could basically complete the homework assignments during the lecture. This allowed me to free up time in the day to revise other subjects or even to just relax and take a chill pill every once in a while. During the tutorial classes, I would be doing homework from other subjects. So I'd be doing my chemistry work and my physics work during math class. I couldn't really do the humanities like economics or general paper because that requires a different set of thinking processes. But the sciences worked pretty nicely with mathematics. So there was once my math teacher saw me doing chemistry and physics and as a responsible math teacher, he told me, hey, put that aside, it's math class, let's do math. As a hopefully sufficiently respectful student, I decided to, okay, fine, oblige and say, all right, sure, I'm going to put this away. And then I, of course, decided to be the math rep because why not? I'm a math nerd and I could worry less about mathematics, at least relative to other subjects. Test after test, I could demonstrate that I genuinely knew what was going on mathematically. I could consistently score one of the top few people in the class. And by the time we hit about May, I would still be doing physics and chemistry in math class. This time, however, my teacher would walk by to my table He'd stare at me and then he would look away and then walk away as if he never saw anything because I was quietly doing my work I wasn't disrupting the class or whatever I wasn't trying to make a ruckus or trying to disrupt the lesson plan that he has for the class and therefore he left me alone to my own devices and I could freely go ahead to complete my chemistry and physics homework or at least some of the revision materials during math class these really worked together to help me essentially do what most people understandably had difficulty doing which is to be consistent with the schoolwork I could essentially complete my homework every single day and revise each day's material incrementally so that when the examinations did come, I was sufficiently well prepared to tackle that. If you want a little bit of a tips type of video on how I do that, do let me know in the comment section below. So on that note on doing non-math stuff during math class, the following year, I was in math lecture and they were talking about complex numbers and as per usual, I would be busy completing my homework because why pay attention in the lecture when I already have essentially learned the material and I can complete my school homework. It's still math, it's not a different subject, it's actually math and it is related in fact to complex numbers. It's actually the complex numbers tutorial. One of these teachers actually just walked by. Uh, this is one of those teachers that they get stationed to monitor students paying attention in the lectures. I don't know why they do that. Honestly speaking, it is what it is. He did approach me and he saw me doing something mathy, but not fully mathy. It's sort of not exactly the same as presented at the moment during the lecture. And he approached me and he asked me, what are you doing? And I replied to him, oh, I'm actually doing the homework for complex numbers. I mean, we are doing complex numbers lecture, so this, I'm doing the homework. And he's like, how are you doing the homework? I, you mean you're not following on with the lecture? And I'm like, yeah, I'm not following with the lecture with all due respect. I've already learned this material. And he stared at me and he was like, you've already learned this material and I'm like yes with all due respect I've already learned this material and he's like all right solve this equation I believe it's z cubed equals to one I went ahead to factorize uh, using the factor theorem and as I was solving he told me okay uh, I'm going to change the question solve z to the seven equals to one of course um, if you've done a little bit of complex numbers you know that it takes a little bit more effort but it boils down to the notion of roots of unity so I went ahead to solve it using the roots of unity and I presented my answer in a relatively compact manner and he looked at my solution and I was like okay here's the solution what do you think and he's like, well, strictly speaking, you should substitute each of the values of k and you should get seven different values uh, that gives the final answer. And all he could say is, therefore, please pay attention in the lecture. And without even letting me respond, he just walked away. And I'm like, I think I just destroyed a math teacher on the spot because he tried to challenge me. And the only counter argument he could come up with is that my presentation needed a little bit of work. Which honestly, if you were to look at this piece of presentation, this is a perfectly clear and legitimate solution. I do not understand why teachers need to 
inflate their ego that much when the reality is I actually have learned the material already. That was a little fun. That was pretty cool. Rather comical, I have to say. It's sort of like my first legitimate defiance against authority figures. Not complaining about that. And that was fun. So the next story comes from the fact that later on in the year, when I was in my second year of, of junior college, the same math teacher who let me do non-math things during math tutorials was holding nightly math sessions, supplementary sessions, sort of like a night study session for his students whom he feels needs a little bit more practice. And I didn't really have much to do on Friday evenings, so I thought to myself, why not let me go to these lessons and, well, help these students out, help my peers. I don't don't have much to do on Fridays. I need to technically revise math, but I don't really want to do too many exercises. So I'm just going to help them with their work. That should suffice for my own revision. And so I requested to my teacher, I was like, hey, can I join your night study sessions to help the students out? And he's like, sure, why not? And so I did that. And that essentially let me begin teaching high school mathematics as a tutor. And I've been doing it for eight years. In fact, the year after that, even though I've already graduated, I've made friends with some people who were a little bit younger than me and they attended the night study sessions as well so I also go back even a year later to help out the same teachers new students so that's, that's that was really fun as well so I helped out his students uh, one after another and eight years later I am teaching classes across every single level you could think of be it primary levels to secondary to junior college and for some of you who are watching this uh, even at the university level because some of you guys uh, know me through the university modules that I taught I just realized I taught the basic modules, that's discrete math, linear algebra, and calculus, you know, so do let me know in the comments if you want me to go through some interesting questions and whatnot. And all of this led to Kindyak Math, because now I'm essentially teaching math to the world. And I realized that most of you guys aren't even from Singapore, which is pretty cool and pretty awesome. And it's my joy and privilege to share about what I do find really interesting. I have been a math nerd and I still am a math nerd. And I think that's pretty cool. Now, the third story is sort of unrelated, but I still thought it's a really fun one to talk about. So this is something that not many people know, at least not many people in my current sphere of friends know. But I actually used to be a huge fan of Michael Jackson when I was younger. So uh, Michael Jackson, unfortunately he passed on in 2009. It was a topic that everyone was talking about and I wanted to get into the action and hopefully gain a little bit of clout from that. I did sort of pick up a few Michael Jackson dance moves. You know, it's a little debatable of how well I use these dance moves for better or for worse. But I remember that in high school, everyone knew me as the math guy. Nobody knew me as someone who could Form. So I decided to sign up for the Teacher's Day performance and I decided to perform sort of a mashup between an Uptown Funk and Billie Jean. So sort of transit from one to the other. Sort of a more contemporary piece that everyone sort of knows and then go back to Billie Jean which is like, whoa, this guy, you know? So that, that's sort of like the intuition I had um, from that. So I, I did that and I performed on Teacher's Day and clearly that shocked everyone. Because everyone knew me as the guy who could do really really well in mathematics and even in some of the other subjects. But nobody knew me as the guy who could moonwalk and whatnot. So clearly uh, many people were quite shocked that that happened and uh, that was a really fun way to sort of just surprise everyone. Like, what? This guy can dance? It's like wow! So I thought that's pretty fun and pretty cool as well. And I guess these experiences really work together to help me look back on my years and see that wait a minute, um, these two years when I was in senior high Shout out to uh, St. Andrews Junior College for having me. These really were the years I look back to with fondest memories, I'll have to say. Uh, I'm not saying that life got worse after that. There were new adventures. Do let me know if you want me to share a little bit more about that. Maybe about university experience in the future. I have to say that junior college was really one of the most memorable ones for me. And I will look back on those with, with fondest memories. Especially about the time when I learned A-level mathematics essentially on my own. And if you want to hear the story of how that happened, click on the video here. <laughs> 